I'm ready when you are. Perfect. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, like Mindy said, my name is Heather Norman Bergdoff, and I'm an extension specialist for nutrition and health with UK Family and Consumer Sciences Extension. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you all today. Um, before I get started, I do want to say happy birthday to someone very important. Um, happy birthday, Mindy. I won't have you say how old you are or anything like that, but um, thank you so much for all that you do and for always being such a great host on these webinars. So happy thank birthday, you. Mindy. <laughs> all right. So, um, I'm glad that you've joined us today to talk a little bit about plated up um, and eating local food. So a lot of people will say that fall or around the holidays is their favorite time of the year. But I have to say that this time of year actually competes with that for me because of the abundance of fresh produce that we have um, that's on sale in the grocery store, especially at the farmer's market or even growing in your own garden. And I think August, when I think August, I think peppers and tomatoes. So today um, we are going to walk through a new tool uh, that has been developed that uses plated up Kentucky Proud recipes. And the three recipes that we're going, going to feature today, as well as the rest of the month, include peppers and tomatoes. So many of you may have seen plated up Kentucky Proud, uh, the logo on other extension products. Maybe you have recipe cards, you've seen them at the grocery store, maybe you've sampled Plated Up Kentucky Proud recipes at the farmer's market, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of background about this project, essentially. So it's actually a decade old. Plated Up Kentucky Proud has been around that long, and I think that's why it has so much recognition across the state. So it actually comes from a funded project that's sponsored by the Kentucky Department of Agriculture and the USDA. And it sets up a partnership between UK Cooperative Extension, uh, Kentucky Department of Ag, uh, and then the Department of Dietetics and Human Nutrition at the University of Kentucky. And so to date, over 120 recipes have actually been developed and distributed as recipe cards across the state. Now these recipes are really special because they were actually developed by students on campus who are in specific courses within dietetics and human nutrition. Those tested recipe or developed recipes by students then go on to our family and consumer science agents who then test them, kind of tweak them, get them to where they need to be. And then ultimately they are Kentucky approved because we get so much praise for how good these recipes are, how easy they are, um, and how they really meet the needs of the Kentuckians across the state. Now, the whole point of this project is to ultimately feature specialty crops that are grown in Kentucky. So not our large commodities, but think about the things you would see at the farmer's market. Cucumbers, blueberries, bell peppers, um, kale, and it's encouraging the consumption ultimately of fruits and vegetables. So I see this project as a win-win-win, essentially. So our dietetics and human nutrition students have got, they've received this rich experience by developing these recipes. We are promoting the purchasing of these locally grown fruits and vegetables by our growers and producers. So we're supporting them and then ultimately we're encouraging the consumption of more fruits and vegetables, which we know is great for everyone. So that's just a little bit of the context behind this project. And you can see why it is so popular and so well received. So I have to make a shout out that it's actually National Farmers Market Week. So this couldn't um, be any more perfectly timed essentially. So this week, uh, the 2nd through the 8th, we are celebrating farmers markets and we're encouraging individuals to go out and support their local growers um, and, and farmers. And so um, food that's produced and processed and distributed all in the same region, it's gonna keep money within the, the community itself. Um, so we're encouraging local economic development and job growth. Um, and they're essentially a great way for small farmers and businesses to sell their products without the added costs of shipping, storage, and even managing their inventory. And so we want to encourage and support 
these local growers and farmers and producers um, by purchasing their products. And that's what Plated Up Kentucky Proud does. We're again, investing money back into the economy. And then not only that, but if we are harvesting these items at peak freshness, the, their nutrition is gonna be the best they can be as well as the taste is gonna be the best that it can be. Um, many farmers markets actually support our federal nutrition assistance programs. So, you know, you might need to check and see if SNAP is accepted at your farmers market or even senior voucher programs. And if you essentially just search for the USDA National Farmers Market Directory, you're going to be able to find out some of that information right there at your fingertips. I also encourage you to look out um, and seek your county extension office because not only will they be promoting Plated Up Kentucky Proud recipes, but also they are usually working very closely with their farmer, the farmer's market in your community and can answer any questions that you may have. And then I ultimately want to direct you to planeatmove.com forward slash resources um, because this is a great website that gives additional information about farmer's market and also provides resources for kids to help them be engaged in purchasing local foods as well as learning about the foods that, that you may be purchasing at the farmer's market itself. So any way to get kids involved um, and teach them about the importance of farmer's markets and communities uh, I think is, it's a great thing that you can do. All right, so what the research says. Um, I mentioned that Planted Up Kentucky Proud was a funded project, and so there's actually been some research that's been done on the project itself. And so um, over the last few years, we've actually been able to show that adults who shop at their local farmer's market report eating more fruits and vegetables daily compared to the state and national averages. And when they try a plated up recipe and or receive a recipe card, we also saw that that was linked to an increased likelihood of purchasing and consuming locally grown produce. So that was the whole point of the project to begin with. So it looks like we're moving in the right direction. And then ultimately we know that those are, who are even aware of the plated up Kentucky Proud program are more willing to try and prepare fruits and vegetables. And it may be because they understand that they're ultimately supporting the growers and farmers that live right there within their community. Okay, and so we love new recipes, we love trying new recipes, but we wanted to take our recipes a step further and make it even more practical for families that are living um, across the state of Kentucky. And so, you know, I know all of you all are busy, whether you're raising a family and you're working, um, summer is just a busy time as it is. So we've created a new tool to help you um, purchase the things that you would need in order to prepare some of these plated up Kentucky Proud recipes. And so this is actually the front of the tool that we've developed. It is a tri-fold. So it's essentially um, three pages that open up and within this tool, this physical tool that you can get, there are three recipes that are featured. And we've also included the grocery list that you would need in order to prepare all three recipes. We provide additional tips, whether that's about saving money or getting kids involved, or um, making the meal prep more simple. And then we are tying all the recipes together because specific produce is featured throughout all of the same recipe, all of these recipes. So in the tool that's available to you now that we're gonna be talking about, um, we are featuring tomatoes and peppers. And so that's why it is perfect for us to be talking about this here in August. So what I'm going to do for the next few slides is walk you through each of the three recipes that are included in the meal plan, as well as the additional pieces to the meal plan so that once you receive this, you know exactly what to do with it and you can hit the ground running. All right, so the first recipe, it actually is called the baked broccoli frittata, but I promise there are tomatoes and peppers that are included within this. Um, and broccoli is actually available fresh earlier in the growing season, but I will say that it is readily available in the freezer section of most grocery stores year round. So if you can't find it fresh, um, and it seems it's a little bit more expensive at the grocery store in the produce section, look in the freezer section. 
And so we are going to be including broccoli, tomatoes, peppers, and green onions within this recipe. Uh, I don't know about you all, but it's always so surprising how expensive colored bell peppers are when they're out of season, okay? And one of the reasons is that they have to stay on the plant longer, they take longer to grow and ripen, and so that's gonna add to the cost of them throughout the year. So when they are in season, take advantage of the lower cost, whether that's at the farmer's market or on sale at the grocery store. And so this one includes a red bell pepper, and sometimes that can be twice the cost of the green bell pepper. And so again, take advantage of this time of year to eat some of this produce that's more expensive during other months. Now, how could you make this a meal? Well, when I saw this, my first thought was Brenner. I don't know about you all, but we do breakfast for dinner regularly. So you could really make it a balanced meal by adding some whole grain toast, uh, maybe some fresh berries, blackberries are still um, in season here in Kentucky right now, and some yogurt. Another idea would be a, um, to make this dish earlier in the week, and then you could essentially use it as a leftover and you have breakfast for every day of the week, um, and it should last you for a few days in the refrigerator. So a lot of versatility with this first recipe. The second recipe that we're going to talk about is the grilled pepper and portobello mushroom sandwich. Um, I love food, I love nutrition, and sometimes I'm intimidated by preparing mushrooms, but this is an awesome recipe. Uh, and I think maybe if you're even a little hesitant about trying a portobello mushroom, this is the way to go for you to try it out first. So again, this recipe has Kentucky peppers, which we um, know are in season right now and should be available to you at the farmer's market through the rest of August, maybe into early September. We wanna look for bell peppers that are firm and have a smooth skin. And then a, a way that you could make this a meal easily would be to add some pasta salad and some sliced apples, and there you go. Fruits, veggies, you've got your grains, as, um, within the pasta salad itself. All right, and then the third recipe included within our meal plan is perfect for August because it includes tomatoes and eggplant. And eggplant is something else that some people are a little uh, hesitant to maybe try, but this is a great way to introduce that uh, vegetable to your family. So you, again, wanna look for eggplants that are smooth, uh, deep purple skin, um, and not too big, so about three to four inches in diameter. And then for tomatoes, you wanna look for ones that are actually heavy for their size and give a little bit to pressure. So yesterday, um, actually my two-year-old son picked a, it was a pretty large tomato off of a plant. And I thought, oh man, it's a little too early. It needed it a couple more days. But when he handed it to me, I literally was surprised at how heavy it was. So then I thought, maybe this guy was ready. So that is a great indication um, if that tomato is ripe and ready to be eaten. So for this dish, um, to make it a meal, I would look at a garden salad, you know, maybe you have some fresh peaches uh, because those um, are usually a summer fruit that we have, but you could just go with a canned peach as well and then adding some whole grain garlic toast and you've got a well-balanced meal. Okay, so those are our three recipes. Now I'm gonna quickly talk through all of the other pieces that are a part of this meal plan. So the first piece that I wanna highlight is the compiled grocery list. And so essentially all three of the recipes have been combined. Um, and so here are all of the ingredients you would need to prepare all three of the recipes that we are featuring. So one thing that I do wanna point out is that it does not include very common pantry staples. And we'll get to that in a second. But we don't want you having to purchase salt and pepper every single time that you go to the grocery store or uh, olive oil every time you go. So this is something you need to pay attention to as you're putting the rest of your grocery list together. I'll also add that on the gro grocery list, it does not include the ingredients that would be needed to make it a meal. So you'll see within the meal plans themselves that we provide those suggestions of how to make it a balanced meal, but this grocery list only uses or only has the ingredients that are needed to make the recipes themselves. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. So I mentioned those pantry items. We actually pull those out and list them separately. So you can look at the pantry items that are needed, and if one of these aren't 
if you don't have one of these, then you would need to add it to your grocery list. So again, a lot of these are going to be um, some common herbs and spices, as well as um, baking items. So sugar, salt, flour, those types of things. So always check your pantry before you actually do your grocery shopping to make sure you don't need to add any of these pantry items to your grocery list themselves. I think this is a great opportunity if you're starting to experiment, experiment more with herbs and spices to start to build your cabinet over time. So maybe you've never used dried parsley before, but these recipes call for it. It's a great way to get that into your spice cabinet and then you may be more likely to use it in the future. And then we also pull out all of the items that you may be able to find at your farmer's market. So maybe you make it a goal every Saturday morning to go to the farmer's market. This puts together all the produce you may be able to find there. I will say that all of these items are included in the grocery list. So be sure you only purchase once. Don't purchase them because they're on your grocery list and then turn around and think you have to go to your farmer's market. We just wanted to pull these out so we could highlight how many different fruits or vegetables you're actually gonna be eating during the week because you're choosing to prepare these plated up Kentucky Proud recipes. And then kitchen equipment. So this is something, if I get a new recipe, I, I quickly glance through how you prepare it to make sure that I have everything that I need to even prepare it in the first place. And so this pulls out all of the kitchen equipment that's needed for all three recipes. So you can quickly take a glance, see if maybe, oh, I don't have a nine by 13, but I've got two eight by eights or you know some other size baking dish. It allows you to plan in advance maybe it requires a slow cooker. Well, that's not gonna be, uh, if you need a meal quickly, that's not gonna be a good uh, idea for you to prepare a meal. So you can look at this, kind of plan out maybe even during the week, if you know what your schedule is, what recipes would be a good day for or what time and how long it'll take, those types of things. So just kind of helping you plan and prepare so that you are more likely to take the time to prepare um, a fresh meal at home. And then within every meal plan, you'll also see that there are some tips and suggestions, um, and these will vary. There, we have several different iterations of our meal plans, um, but in the one that we're talking about today, um, we actually provide uh, suggestions for how to get kids involved. So with the eggplant parmesan rollatinis, that name is really fun. You could kind of play it up with a younger kid. You could actually have the children roll up the eggplant slices themselves. It's gonna be messy, that's okay. You're gonna bake it, it's gonna be yummy, whatever it looks like, um, but that's just a fun way to get kids involved. There are also suggestions um, how to save money or stay on a budget. So one of these recipes calls for a fresh cheese that you grate. Well, shredded cheeses that you find in the refrigerated section at your grocery store may be a much more budget-friendly substitution instead of that fresh cheese, and it may last longer. So again, that's a consideration that you can um, look at whenever you're going over your grocery uh, list for the week. And then fresh herbs, you can often replace them by dried herbs, which have a much longer shelf life. And so um, there's lots of resources at the Extension Office about using herbs and spices, but essentially you're gonna divide the quantity of whatever the fresh herb is by three because your dried herbs are gonna be much more concentrated in flavor. And then the last tip and suggestion that we have is you can truly simplify kitchen equipment in this case. So a, a nine by 13 is gonna work for both the frittata and rollatinis, even though they may call for a different size baking dish. And then I know with the portobello mushroom sandwich, it actually calls for a grill. Well, that's not readily available for a lot of people. So all you need to do is just use that oven broiler instead, which everyone usually has within their home that they could use with their oven. So again, just some simp simple twists and changes to kind of make it easier for you to prepare these uh, different recipes for your family. All right, so how do I get one? Maybe that's the question all of you are thinking right now. Um, so this is where I'm going to encourage you to contact your local family consumer sciences agent at your county extension office. And so you can call them up, you can send them an email, you can request one, you could stop by the office and pick one up, or um, we could have them mail one to you. Simply just say that you're interested in a Plated Up Kentucky Proud meal plan uh, featuring tomatoes and peppers. And then once you receive that, you can start preparing those recipes. 
If you don't know how to find your county extension office, I'm going to encourage you to visit extension.ca.uky.edu for a list of all the county offices and contact information. And I will say that there really are limited quantities. So we're encouraging you to kind of um, jump on it, run, don't walk um, before these guys run out. So it is first come, first serve. So again, reach out to your FCS agent at your extension office and simply request a plated up Kentucky Proud meal plan. Uh, and then I also want to include a promo here. Every Thursday for the rest of the month, same time, same place as today on our UK Family and Consumer Sciences Extension Facebook page, we're gonna have different extension agents from across the state who are going to be doing live demonstrations of the three recipes that we walked through today. So we're gonna have Lynn Blankenship in, Mark, in Metcalf County. She's gonna be putting together that baked broccoli frittata next Thursday the 13th at 11 a.m., 10 a.m. Central. August 20th, uh, Kelly Burgess down in Allen County is gonna be doing our eggplant Parmesan rollatinis, which is really fun. And then August 27th, Carly G uh, Giles in Jessamine County is gonna be doing the grilled pepper and portobello mushroom sandwich. And then last, I just want to encourage you guys to reach out and be involved with the Plated Up Kentucky Proud Project. Um, you can see all of the different ways to connect with us on this, web, uh, on this slide right here. Um, please visit our website where you can find, again, 100, over 100 recipes that feature produce that's grown here in Kentucky. I know that when we get our box from our Community Supported Agriculture, our CSA share every week, once I see what I have, I immediately go to the Plated Up Kentucky Proud website. It's sorted by produce. So if I get a ton of tomatoes, I directly go to the tomato section, and then I'll find something that we can put together um, in our house. Um, engage with us on Facebook with our Plated Up Kentucky Proud page. We also have Instagram and Twitter. So we kind of fit everyone's needs when it comes with the social media platforms. If you have any specific questions for me, feel free to send me an email, heather.norman at uky.edu. Um, mark your calendar for the upcoming agent demonstrations. And then again, I'm encouraging you to run, don't walk, reach out to your county extension office and request a plated up meal plan. And that is all I have. So I'll take any questions that you may have at this time. Otherwise, we are finished. I'm looking at um, the chat box right now. Uh, and I'm saying it's great resources um, that people uh, have to share. Uh, they're appreciative of, of the work that you've put into this project. Um, uh, we are very fortunate to have Heather working on the project because her knowledge is so great and she does um, really lend lots and lots of great ideas and um, additional things that we've not had before. So that's exciting to have. Um, and I'm always looking for creative ways um, from you guys of uh, how you use the Plated Up Kentucky Proud Project or the recipes and how we can <laughs> share that widely across the state. So again, I just put my email address in the chat box and I'm happy um, to answer any questions you may have or just hear great suggestions that you have. So thank you all. Thanks everybody. Um, as Heather said, we'll be back here again next week at 11 a.m. Central, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, and Lynn, Lynn Blankenship will be presenting our recipe. In the meantime, we hope you'll run out to your extension office and get um, a copy of the summer meal plan. Um, and make sure you ask for the one that does include the um, peppers and tomatoes, because we do have others. Um, and Heather will be back with us again next month on the 3rd of September to share about the fall meal plan. So um, thanks for all, the, uh, for all of you for joining us today. And thanks, Heather, for a great job.